What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. Welcome to our daily show where we discuss everything you need to know about and what's going on here in our country on a daily basis, including money, investing, the stock market, the fourth stimulus package update, and stimulus check update. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, make sure to click the subscribe button down below. It's completely free to do so. And remember that new videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, thanks for hitting the like button for us down below. In this video, we have multiple different states either passing or in the process of passing state stimulus checks. And we're going to be talking about federal stimulus checks here as well as we have both Republicans and Democrats talking about uh, federal stimulus checks for the whole country. There is a lot going on here with new stimulus checks, either on the, like I said, the state level or the federal level. Uh, there's a lot of states that have already passed state stimulus checks or tax rebate checks. Um, whatever you want to call them. Remember, a stimulus check is actually, the one of the official names is actually a tax rebate check. Uh, as a federal stimulus check, remember stimulus check one, two, and three is actually, uh, one of the official names is an advanced tax rebate check. So it's really kind of the same thing. Uh, but I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to show you multiple different articles right here on the screen. Uh, from local news stations and stuff like that. So you can read it uh, right here for yourself. So let's jump right in. Okay, first up, tax rebate checks 2022, aka stimulus checks. Multiple different states are sending out up to $1,000 in cash coming out here soon. But like I said, we're going to go over multiple different states here. I'm trying to keep you guys updated on as many uh, states here as possible, what's going out, when they're going out, and uh, new states that are coming up. And honestly, I think a lot of states are going to be sending out multiple checks potentially as each state has billions and billions of dollars of what they're calling surplus money here. Surplus money. So let's go through that. Hundreds of thousands of New Mexico residents will see two reimbursements in May, up to $1,000. Just over a month after lawmakers authorized cash transfers to residents of New Mexico to help offset rising living costs of gas prices, the state now says the first wave of funds is on its way. According to KRQE, more than $200 million will be distributed to nearly half a million New Mexico residents. Head of household surviving spouses and married couples finally jointly returns will each get $1,000 in two installments, two installments. So uh, it's $500 per person, and I believe it's going out in two different checks of $250 each for the state of New Mexico. Individual filers and new and married couples filing separately will get $500 each in two installments. So it's $250 and $250 later uh, for this state, I believe. And the payments should come automatically if you filed state taxes. Meanwhile, Idaho citizens will get tax refund checks or direct payments equal to 12% of their 2020 taxes or $75, which, whichever is greater. So you can actually get more than that depending on how much you paid uh, in your 2020 taxes. Some states are doing 2020, some states are doing 2021. Uh, it really just depends. There's those two states. Governor Ned Lamont of Connecticut announces a launch of a new state child tax rebate. So remember the child tax credits on the federal level. A lot of states have child tax credits on the state level as well. You can get both on the state level and the federal level. Um, you just have to file a tax return on the state level. And remember that even if you don't normally file tax returns, all you need to do is just go ahead and file a tax return. Um, just like the child tax credits, the IRS urges you, I'll show you here, uh, right here on the IRS's website, IRS child tax credit payments in 2021, which, you know, for last year, you know, but now for this year, 
under the American Rescue Plan of 2021, that's the third stimulus check package uh, that sent out the $1,400 stimulus checks the, underneath Biden. That was the, the stimulus checks that, you know, the, that were sent out underneath Biden. Uh, advanced payments of up to half of the child tax credits um, that were passed under that package were sent out under uh, to eligible taxpayers. But you don't really have to be a taxpayer to get that. But you do have to file a tax return to get the other half of that money, okay? Because remember that you can see here the child tax credit portal is no longer available. Um, but but this is so important. I've mentioned this a bunch of times, but I, I, I want to briefly say this again. If, if you have any friends or family or you, um, if you don't file taxes, and you have children, you, you want to go ahead and file a tax return anyway, even if you don't normally file a tax return on the federal level for 2021, go ahead and file a tax return anyway, even if you have no income at all, file a tax return, again, seek, seek a professional or, or something like that, you know, walk an H&R block or, or do it through TurboTax or, you know, Something like that, okay? Make sure you file a tax return if you have children for 2021. The IRS says you're owed fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars, the other half of the child tax credits from 2021, because the monthly payments did not start last year until June. So the first half, the January, or they didn't start till July, the January through June payments, the first half of last year. There was no monthly payments for that. You get that money, the first half of last year's money, with your tax refund, okay? So $1,500 if you have children over the age of six and $1,800 if you have children under the age of six, okay? Um, you get that with a, with a tax return, okay? So you file a tax return and the IRS sends you the money, okay? But if you don't file a tax return, you, you won't get the money, okay? So even if you made $0 of income, if you didn't work, if you've never filed a tax return, whatever this case is, if you don't file a tax return, the IRS won't send you the money. Fifteen to $1,800 per person, okay? Uh, that may be the case for some of the state uh, stimulus checks or tax uh, return tax rebate checks as well. But again, everybody's situation is different. I'm talking to tens of thousands of people per video, so that's why... If your state is going to issue a stimulus check or tax rebate checks, uh, you know, talk to somebody, walk into an H&R block. If you have somebody in your family who um, knows anything about taxes and knows your personal situation, talk to them. Because again, I don't know your personal situation. I don't know you or anything like that, but it might be worth talking. If you're going to get a stimulus check from your state and it's $500 per person, $1,000, it might just be worth filing a tax return with your state and then getting a thousand dollars. But again, I don't know your personal situation, so keep that in mind. And I don't know which state you're from. Each state's a little bit different. Okay, uh, I don't know the rules and regulations for each state, so you got to look into that as well. There's a few states only. I, again, I don't. I, each state's a little bit different, but there's a one or two states that are doing a special program or two where they are. Um, there's one or two states that have like, they're, they're doing a special program where they're like also paying checks to people who don't file, uh, state tax returns where they're like looking up these people through, uh, the state driver's license program through the DMV. Okay. So if you're from one of those states, you might want to look into that as well. So keep that in mind. Like I've said before, I'm here trying to help as many people as possible. If you're owed money from the state or from the federal government, if you're owed $1,500 or $1,800 per child, if you're owed state stimulus checks or money from the IRS, whatever it is, I really would hate to see thousands or millions of people miss out on that money simply because they didn't file paperwork or something. I mean, think about how many people this probably happens to every single year. The IRS says that there's probably going to be hundreds of thousands or millions of people that miss out on their child tax credits from last year alone because people just don't file the, the, um, their taxes.
And remember that the child tax credits have been going on for 23, maybe 24 years now. Um, but a lot of people don't get them because they don't file taxes. Okay. Um, now remember that former President Donald Trump raised them from $1,000 per year to $2,000 per year, but a lot of people didn't get them because they didn't file taxes. It's a big thing now. People you know, all know about it now because of the monthly payments that they send out checks in advance. But this has been going on for years, guys, for years. And most people just didn't. It was just wasn't a big thing that people talked about. But it was just filed taxes, you got the credit or you got the check or, you know, whatever. Right. But it's been around for almost 25 years. So going back, the governor of Connecticut has just announced a child tax credit, child tax rebate for the state of Connecticut. The state has 300,000 postcards going out in the mail Thursday, notifying residents that they can qualify for up to $750. This is actually a good one because most states don't send out 300,000 postcards. I mean, that alone, I mean, that could cost them a dollar each to make the postcard, print them, and then mail them. That could cost them $300,000 if you think about printing the postcard, having them made up, having the template made for them, and then the cost of the postcard. I mean, what's a postcard cost? I don't know what they cost, 25 cents or something like that. And then the cost to make them and stuff. If, if, if all that comes to a dollar, that's $300,000. You know, most states don't do that. You know, they, they pass a law and then it's up to you to know about it, right? Depending on how many children and have the claim on their taxes, right? So most people just don't know about this stuff, right? But anyways, this state alone, you can qualify for up to $750 just with that state child tax credit, right? Pretty cool there. Remember, your state may have a child tax credit as well, so look into that. Parents can get $250 per child, capping at $750, so basically up to three children. If you're from Connecticut, to apply, you can go to this website, portal.ct.gov forward slash DRS. Uh, you can just pause, the web, pause this video here and go to this, share this video with anybody from Connecticut. Again, if you're from any other state and you have children, you might want to Google and see if your state has a child tax credit for the state as well. There's a lot of stuff like this. This could mean $750 for you just from your state. Okay, next up, the state of Minnesota. You can see here a tax deal reached in final weekend of session at Minnesota Capitol. The fate of a $4 billion package is tied to other fights over spending on classroom, healthcare, and public safety. Um, this is kind of the problem with politics is that it's not easy to pass big packages like this. Really, $4 billion is actually kind of a small package. A lot of these other packages are tens of billions of dollars based on you know, sizes of states here. But the problem is, is that um, there's a lot of complicated issues with every single state. And uh, sometimes it's like they're, they're fighting over all sorts of different issues inside, you know, each state's packages, right? But you can see here in Minnesota, taxes on social security income would be eliminated. And all Minnesotans would see an income tax cut under a sweeping agreement struck at Minnesota's divided capital. So, I mean, you know, that alone sounds good. Social Security income uh, taxes would be eliminated, and all Minnesotans would see an income tax cut. This is because states are flush with cash, so they can do stuff like this. Renters and families with children could see boosted tax credits. Remember, tax credits are basically money back in your pocket, but taxpayers would not see direct rebate checks, but you would see tax credits, which is money one way or another. This tax bill provides relief to a lot of Minnesotans, hardworking Minnesotans, lower income Minnesotans, says Senate Majority Leader Jeremy Miller. 
a Republican. The package of $4 billion in tax cuts over three years is one of the first major deals to materialize at the Capitol as legislators face a Sunday night deadline to finish their work for the year. But its fate could be tied to an additional $4 billion in proposed spending on classrooms, public safety, and health care, with legislative negotiators continuing to spar over with time running out. Both parties have made tax cut priorities a priority this session, with nearly $9.3 billion projected budget surplus. Now, when I when I tell you guys that each state has a lot of money, I'm not joking. Literally one by one, each state has billions of dollars of extra money, one by one. Each state's doing a little bit differently of, of how they want to give money back, tax cuts, cutting Social Security, income taxes. You know, they're all doing it a little bit differently, right? Republicans secured an elimination of state taxes on Social Security income, a top priority they've been pushing at the Capitol for years. So that's literally giving money back to people on Social Security. So it's not a stimulus check, but it is giving money back to people on Social Security. So one way or another, it's giving people money back. And that's just one of the things in this. You know, we've already mentioned a couple of things. Uh, they also pitched cutting the first income, first tier income tax rate from 5.3% to 2.8%. So that alone is, again, more money in your pocket, amounting to roughly $1,000 in savings each year for a family making up to $100,000. The final deal, permanent, deal permanently cuts that rate down to 5.1% a much smaller reduction than they had originally proposed. In exchange, House Democrats got the top priority to boost the number of people who could receive a refundable renter's tax credit. So that's money for renters. Yeah, they had been pushing to use the surplus to send a one-time tax rebate check, but legislators did not include it in their deal. The tax cut is part of a global framework that includes $4 billion in new spending over the next three years and an additional $4 billion left on the bottom line. They said, I don't know what else to do. We don't have days and days. We hardly have hours and hours to figure it out. So as my father would say, you better get on your horse and, uh, well, figure it out, right? And this is, this is the same thing going on here uh, in Washington, D.C., that is, for the country. Um, as Republicans and Democrats are pretty much doing the same thing. And um, you see a lot of Democrats and Republicans doing the same thing here, you, how to govern our country. And, you know, Biden is saying, President Biden is saying now that uh, they're going to have $1.5 trillion of surplus for the country now that they, that they could uh, pay down deficit. Or used to basically give back to the people with checks or programs or anything. You know, they could use that money for anything. They could use it for stimulus checks, raises to Social Security, raises to SNAP. Remember, they do have that new SNAP benefit, food stamp benefits conference coming up here uh, in a few months. But we're going to see the same type of things. We're going to see any. So they can do the SNAP, they can do some things like SNAP raises, food stamp raises without even going through Congress. They can literally just do that through the USDA authority, okay? Um, just like President Biden can actually cancel um, student loan debt through executive order authority. So some things they can actually do without Congress. <laughs> it's interesting how they, some things they can do without Congress. And uh, remember that former President Donald Trump did those checks, whether you call them stimulus checks or unemployment boost checks, he did six checks of $300 per week or $300 for six checks, a total of $1,800. And then some states kicked in an additional $100 um, back in 2020. Uh, realistically, they were stimulus checks, but whatever you want to call them. Um, he did that through executive order, okay? And realistically, if Trump could do it, Biden could do it, Biden could do it as well. Um, 
And real question is here is that what is going to happen going forward, especially with leftover stimulus money? Um, the last report we got was that there was up to $800 billion of leftover stimulus money. The, uh, now we're going to have potentially $1.5 trillion of budget surplus on the federal level. Okay, we're seeing all these, that's $1.5 trillion. We're seeing all these billions of dollars for each state. Uh, California has somewhere around close to $100 billion just for California, just for one state of a budget surplus. California is considering uh, up to $400 per car checks, rebate checks, stimulus checks, whatever you want to call it, or $200 per person checks as well. The governor there says that the $400 checks per car, which for most people would be more, would go out faster because they would do them through the DMV of the state instead of doing them through the basically the uh, tax department of the state because the tax department is <laughs> behind as well because they're doing their own state tax returns just like the IRS is behind, unbelievably behind. If you have anything to do with the IRS right now, it's just good luck because they're just so far behind. They just don't have enough people and... Um, yeah, they're just unbelievably behind, right? So anything to do with taxes, tax returns, tax anything through states or the IRS, everything is just behind, right? So the governor there says that uh, if they do it through the DMV through, per car, uh, it would go faster. Now, there, there's a little bit of a discrepancy there because if you don't have a car, you might not get a check. But, you know, if you do have a car... You will get a check, and then the check could be higher, $400 per car instead of, say, $200 per person, but the $200 per person would include ch children as well, so if you have four children, you could get more. You know, it might work out a little bit differently for different families, you, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out a little bit differently different ways, right? Uh, but the governor says that the for the California checks, that if they pass it, you know, they don't know which way they're going to pass it yet. They're... They've been debating it for a little while, and you know that's why I said each state. When you look at each state, it's it's going a little bit differently. Same thing with the federal government as as well is that you know you got Republicans and Democrats. Republicans are not really working with the Democrats. Democrats are not really working with the Republicans very well, and then you got Joe Manchin who's not really working well with well either party. <laughs> So, and you got uh, President Biden, who's being urged by Democrats to just go ahead and pass things with his presidential authority through executive order, or sometimes it's really just through the authority of, of government agencies like the USDA, uh, when they passed that 25% permanent SNAP raise, which was last year, uh, they just, they can just do it through government agencies sometimes. So... And now that the government has taken in all this extra money, you look at all these states that are having surplus. Because unemployment's really low right now. It's at like 3.5, 3.6%. So a lot of people have gone back to work, and that means that income is going up. People are you know, paying extra sales tax. They're paying you know, retail sales or taking in more money. Uh, people are paying more taxes. So you know, income is going up. That's part of the reason why inflation's going up. You know, everything, the economy is going up. And um, th this is why, you know, everybody's taking in more money now. So that's part of the reason why inflation is running hot, as, as well as the supply chain issues, gas prices, food prices, everything is just kind of, that's part of the reason why recession <laughs> is just, everything's just going crazy right now. You know, it's weird. So we came out of a recession and now inflation is running so hot that we could actually send us ourselves back into a recession because of how high inflation is. It affects basically everybody in the lower half because the inflation is so high that it's hurting so many people. Yeah. 
So let me know your thoughts. I'll keep you up to date here. I actually got a lot more states to cover here that I'll cover in the next couple videos here because there's just so much information. So let me know your thoughts here. New videos come out here every day at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Make sure to click the subscribe button down below if you haven't yet. It's completely free to do so. It just makes it so you uh, won't miss out on new videos. Uh, after clicking the subscribe button, click the bell icon that appears next to the subscribe button so you get uh, notified as soon as we go live with new videos. You can click here to watch my newest video next. And you can click here to see a new video I just did on social security raises. That's a really good video here as well to watch if you haven't seen that yet. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.